know that you love us with an everlasting love. And you have shown that to us in our blessed Lord Jesus. But Lord, our hearts are heavy and filled with pain and questions. It's like a shadow that has come across the sun, Lord, and our lives are lived there right now. And we ask that you would come and by your word and through your spirit, you would remove the shadow and allow us to see the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we pray these things in Jesus' wonderful and strong name. Amen. <coughs> Hear God's word as it's given first for our comfort and our assurance from the Old Testament. <coughs> God is our refuge and strength very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, therefore we will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried to the <coughs> of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So I will lift up mine eyes to the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved, and he that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel will be your slumber and your sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out. And I come again, and this time forth, and even forevermore. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not die. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy step. They comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And then, oh well then, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now would you turn your attention to the New Testament. Hear God's word of comfort and assurance to us there. Now is Christ risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. <coughs> For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy sting? Thanks be to God who gives us victory over death through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. I believe in God, I believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. For when I saw I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Now when Jesus came, he found that his friend Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, and many had come to Martha and Mary to console them, considering their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out and met him while Mary stayed in the house. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask from God, he will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Oh, Martha said, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said, yes, Lord. I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God. So who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature is able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let's pray again. Ah. 
to their earthly parents, asking the Lord God that today you would assist us, that by your Spirit you would undertake for us, that you would minister to our hearts. Lord God, we want to simply acknowledge our thanks for Jesus, for the difference that Jesus Christ makes in our life and in the tragedies and hurts and the pain of life. I want to thank you today, Lord God, my Father, for the faith which you have given Philip when I am so grateful, Lord, for their love for you. And so today, we, their friends, gather to, to tell them that we love them. But more importantly, Lord, we want to point them and ourselves to you today. We ask that you would minister to us as only you can do. We pray that in Jesus' strong name. Amen. This morning I was... Uh, reading through my Bible, and I uh, was drawn to Psalm chapter 60, verse 11, which says this, Give us aid, O God, for the help of man is worthless. I hope you hear that this morning. Uh, there's nothing I've got to say that's going to be of much value today. Uh, really, Bill and Wendy, there's not much that any of us as your friends have to say, that is going to be of much value. But there is great value in the Word of God. And it's to the Word of God that I want to turn your attention this morning, trusting that His Spirit will minister to us in a very special way. I wonder if you're like me. When you heard that Nathaniel died, did you ask the question, why? <coughs> I did I, I, I asked the question, well, why? Why uh, do Phil and Wendy have to go through this? Why did the baby die? First thing I want to encourage you with is that we're in good company in asking that question. Remember when our Lord Jesus was on the cross? He said, my God, my God, why? Why? Why hast thou forsaken me? As I received the news of the death of Nathaniel, I uh, started to pray for Phil and Wendy. And then I uh, had an old hymn start going through my mind. You know how that works? Uh, not something that you bring up, it's just that the Spirit of God brings it to you. And here was a song. It's, a, it's an old one. I'll probably be the only one here who knows it. It goes like this. I do not know why all around my shattered hopes all seem to be. God's perfect plan I may not see, but someday I'll understand. Someday he'll make it plain to me. Someday when I his face shall see, someday from tears I shall be free. For someday I shall understand. Jesus said it this way in John 13, 7, you do not understand now what I am doing, but one day you will. In other words, we need to remind ourselves that amidst the tears, amidst the pain, there is a purpose, there is a hand, a sovereign hand of God that is at work. And although we do not understand it, nevertheless, we believe it. Remember the last words that Jesus uttered on the cross? Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. See, the question why is always okay as long as you end by saying, into your hands I commend my spirit. Lord, I don't understand it all, but I trust you. I trust you for my life, the life of my children, for the life of the family. I like the way Philip put it in his little write-up in our bulletin this morning. He said, we don't understand all of the reasons for Nathaniel's short life, but we accept it as part of God's wonderful plan. When I went to sleep last night, the last thing I remember saying to the Lord was this. Would you please minister to my spirit tonight? Would you please help me to know what it is 
I should share tomorrow. And so I got up this morning, relatively early, and went downstairs and was sitting on my chair. And again, another song came to me. It's the song that I've only heard the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir do. It's a song that says, I want to see Jesus. And the singer is talking about the fact that he's died and he's gone to heaven. And he's seen his loved one. He's seen his friends. He's seen Abraham and Isaac and Timothy. And then he says, but I want to see Jesus. And as I was thinking of that song, in my spirit, I heard God say to me, Dale, tell the people this morning where Nathaniel is. Tell them what he's experiencing. So, so I want to ask you a question. Where is Nathaniel right now? Thank you. How about the rest of us? Where is Nathaniel right now? With, with Jesus. Jesus. Now, as I understand the word of God, because of Phil and Wendy's faith, because of the fact that Nathaniel did not come to the age of discernment, the then according to the word of God, he is with Jesus. Remember the thief on the cross? He said, after he trusted in Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. See, he thought that was going to be a long way away. What did Jesus say? Today, you will be with me in paradise. Today. And so that's the thing I want you to understand. Phil, Wendy, friends, kids, never forget it. Nathaniel is with Jesus. And listen to the way the Bible describes heaven. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them, and they will be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. He will wipe away everything from their eye. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain. For all those former things are passed away. Did you hear it? No tears, no death, no more crying, no more pain. I was thinking today, but the man will never have to have anything. We live in this veil of tears. But God, for some reason, spared Nathaniel. The poet put it this way. The golden gates were open, and heavenly angels smiled, and with their tuneful harp strings welcomed the little child. They shouted high and holy, Nathaniel has entered in. And saved from all temptation, he is saved from sin. They led him through the golden streets on to the king of kings, and a glory fell upon him from the rustling of their wings. The Savior smiled at Nathaniel as none had ever done, as heaven's glory shone around the little earthborn sun. Oh, had those on earth seen through those gates the welcome to him given, they never would have wished this child back from his home in heaven. That's where he is. He's with Jesus. Someday, by God's grace, because of our faith in Jesus, we too shall be there. And someday, we shall be reunited with Nathaniel and the hosts of our loved ones and friends who have gone before us. Friends, this is our faith, is it not? This is what the Christian faith is all about. Either this is real, or let's pack it up and go home. Paul says, if Christ be not risen from the dead, then we of all people are most to be pitied. But thanks be to God, Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. When we put our faith and trust in him, then that guarantees us new life now and the assurance of life forever with Jesus. Bill, Wendy, kids, relatives, and friends, cry, grieve well, tears, Jesus cry. So we're in good company again. But those are not the tears of those who are hopeless. <clears throat> they are tears of those who trust in Jesus. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the victory that Jesus Christ has obtained for us. I thank you for the assurance that your word gives to us of 
hear the fabulous now. So Lord, over these days and weeks and years, I pray that your word would settle deeply in our spirits and that we would be rooted and grounded in the truth of that word. We give ourselves over to you, great God, this day. Thank you for who you are and for all that you have done in the So to him who is able to do it exceedingly abundantly above all that we would ask or think, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church now and forever.
Because I am fearfully and wonderfully made, your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in a secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. You, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God! How vast is the sum of them! Where do I count them? They would outnumber the grains of the sand. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I will keep him in perfect peace. His mind is stayed on me because he trusts in me. And so, Father, we are thankful for that victory which Jesus has obtained for us because of his resurrection from the dead. And so now, Lord, we commit Nathaniel's body to the ground. We commit him to you, knowing that he is with you. And we thank you for that victory which Jesus has. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us and sustain our hearts this day and in the days to come. And God's people said, Amen. Amen.
Oh, good. Remember it, right?